Hello, and thanks for watching this video. I have some big news for you. I've upgraded my body. I am now part machine. I installed a continuous blood glucose monitor on myself. So why? Why would I want to know what my blood glucose is at all times? When your blood sugar is high or blood glucose, it's generally a proxy for inflammatory markers in your body and you want your blood sugar low as much as humanly possible. So when you eat a food, you have a certain response in your blood sugar. Four different reasons. You have more sugar floating around in your blood and it spikes up and then it returns down to baseline. So some people's baselines are a little bit different due to metabolic history. Mine seems to have been running around 75 to 80. When you have a food and you intake it, um, you want to see this graph as low as possible and back to baseline as fast as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a bunch of different videos about my experience with this. I wanted to track my foods. Instead of pricking my finger 15 times, I have an app on my phone that's able to show me at every given moment what my blood sugar is. That way it'll show me a graph of when I eat a food, how high it goes, and when it comes back down to baseline. Um, especially when you're in a ketogenic diet, something you want to track. Uh, blood sugar is an easier way to tell than ketone levels. So if you look at ketone levels in your bloodstream, that can be delayed. And so it might take a little bit longer to see if something actually affects and kicks you out of ketosis. For instance, if I ate rice today, my ketone levels tomorrow might be lower but it's something that I can narrow down. If I ate rice today, I can see my blood sugar spike up and then when it returns back to normal. More foods that you have that are lower in that spike equal the more ketogenic friendly foods for you and the foods that you can eat and get away with more of them and still maintain in a ketogenic state. So it's a much easier way, in my opinion, to track keto friendly foods and foods that you personally should be reacting to. So this experiment is just an N equals one. This is just how I react to foods. But first up, we're going to do a bunch of different keto bars. There's a lot of bars on the market. There's a lot of bars that I've been eating myself. There's a bar that uh, I actually developed because of this reason, but each of them we're going to go over what the bar is, the brand, the flavor, the ingredients, the protein, carbohydrate, fat ratios, the sugar, the size of the bars, um, the consistency, the taste. And then the big thing here is how much it spikes my blood sugar over time and how long that takes to get back to normal. You're gonna be surprised at some of these results. I've, I've done this a few times now, just pricking my finger. So I wanna see the, the total curve over time instead of having to prick my finger 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes. I can just look at a graph on my phone. Um, and so we'll go through and we'll go over that and have a review at the end of all these different bars and how they impact my blood sugar. Let's get to it. All right, testing the Bulletproof, new one, apple pie, apple pie bar. So Bulletproof is one of the leading low carb bars in the market. I'm actually not a Bulletproof hater. I love a lot of the stuff they're doing. I actually like their bars. I think that before we launched the Perfect Keto bar, they were my favorite bar in the market. So no hate towards Bulletproof. Lemon has been my favorite flavor, but we're going with the apple pie today because I've never had it and I want to try it. One of the things I dislike about Bulletproof, and this was not staged. I literally grabbed this out of a box. Um, they're always so crumbly. This is like 14 different pieces in here already. It's sad, it makes me sad, but usually pretty good. Let's read out the ingredients. Clean label from Bulletproof as always, so that's always good. Organic cashew butter, grass-fed collagen protein, inulin, which is chicken root fiber, Bulletproof XCT oil powder, which is just MCT oil powder, organic apples, organic cashews, Bulletproof Brain Octane Oil, which again is just MCT oil. Uh, organic Maple Extract, Organic Coconut Oil, Vanilla Extract, Organic Cinnamon, Sea Salt, Organic Stevia Leaf Extract. Supplement Fact Panel, Nutrition Facts Panel. Total fat, 12 grams. Total protein, 12 grams. Total carbohydrate, 16. Uh, four grams of sugar. Um, so a lot of people think that this is a keto bar because those carbs are a little bit low and the net carbs are subtracted out. And so it's 11 grams net carbs. Uh, we'll see. I've had problems in the past with blood sugar with these things. Doesn't mean that I don't always go for them whenever I'm traveling. Sometimes it's not a huge issue, but um, let's open it up, see what it is. Okay, again, I can't really show this to you as a hold it up in a bar form because it's all busted up here. So it's just, it's how they usually come. It makes me sad. Uh, but again, let's try it out. Apple pie is pretty good. Yeah, flavor is great. Consistency, pretty on point of all other Bulletproof bars, which is like extremely crumbly, as you can see. But tastes good, really sticky in the teeth. Not as bad as some other bars, but pretty good overall. Let's keep chowing this down.
I don't like that I can't take this out of the package and just hold it and eat it like a bar. I know. It's kind of annoying. But it's good. Clean panel. Flavor's good. Again. Do you hear a wrapper? See like what's left on it. This is why it's so sticky in your teeth. All that stuff in there. So as I'm finishing this up, I'm gonna pull my continuous glucose monitor and starting point here. 80. Looking good. I'm gonna try this thing down. We'll be back in 20 minutes. See how the first round goes. And we keep going back until my blood sugar is back around 80, you know, plus or minus three points. See a spike and how long it gets back together. So 20 minutes, see you then. All right, bulletproof bar, 20 minutes in. Baseline was 80. And the 20 minute mark is 108. I was not expecting that sharp of a rise that quickly. Um, so see if that goes higher, but we'll check in another 20 minutes to see where we're at and we'll go from there. Sad news, bulletproof at 40 minutes. 109 so pretty much a 30 point jump from the baseline to 108 and now 109 we will wait again until baseline so see you guys again in 20 minutes but so far bulletproof not looking the best for keto our mark where are we at bulletproof what's going on 116 oh my goodness an hour in baseline was 80 still rising steadily um, went from 80 to 108 to 109 to 116. We will keep testing and we'll try to get back to baseline. We are at the one hour and 20 minute mark with bulletproof in still pretty high at 109. Yep, 109, still going down. Oh man, just, I have never done this before with the, these bars and to see this this much, like I expected it to rise my blood sugar a little bit, but not this much and not for this long. So maybe I'm just screwed up, I don't know, but we'll see with the rest of the bars. Um, I'll continue to, do some testing as we go out with the bulletproof bar before we get back to baseline. So keep you filled in. All right, I said that I would go until we hit baseline and it's three hours and six minutes after the first reading, eating the bulletproof bar and we're at 93. So a graph, boom, huge spike. I'm gonna call it at three hours and six minutes. I need to get on with my day and eat a real meal but we will continue testing. Um, fun fact though, this happens more than you think. This is why you need to test things. So if you don't want your blood sugar rising for three full hours after you eat a meal, you need to do stuff like this. It's a pain in the ass to have the strips. That's why I got the continuous blood glucose monitor, but you should know these things, it's important. All right, next up, Quest Bar. I have admittedly been a little biased on Quest Bar and not a huge fan for a long period of time due to their ingredient list, which we'll get to in a second. And also, I just don't think they taste that great, so this is not something new. The ingredients, protein blend, milk protein isolate, whey protein, soluble corn fiber. I do not like corn, some of you may know that. Water, erythritol, almonds, palm kernel oil, natural flavors, sodium caseinate, sea salt, gum arabic, spirulina extract, red cabbage extract, turmeric extract, radish extract, sucralose, sunflower lecithin. Not as clean as some of the other products that we're trying in this video, but in Quest has to do what they do. They're one of the biggest bar manufacturers in the country. Nutrition facts, calories 180, total fat five grams, uh, total carbohydrate 25 grams with 14 grams of fiber, one gram of sugar, and then six grams of erythritol as a sugar alcohol, then 21 grams of protein. Everyone says that Quest is a low carb keto bar, but those are not really keto macros to me. Um, but this is the number one thing that people said that they ate when I asked, what do you eat for a low carb bar? It's gonna do it. Okay. Consistency, obviously great. This is probably gonna be one of the best consistencies of the bars that we have. So super solid bar forms is what you expect from a protein bar. Looks like they're colored with those natural things. So it's the best you can ask for. Fish, strange. I would say not necessarily exactly a birthday cake, but something artificially sweet for sure. So as I'm chowing this down, blood sugar reading, as a baseline, we're at 80, yeah? So, Seems to be what I'm stable at is around 80, between 75 and 85. Consistency is great, requires a lot of chewing, which is probably a good thing to keep you a little bit more full and be a little more satisfying. Not crumbly at all. Obviously, 
That's to do with a lot of the ingredients they have, like the soluble corn fiber, which I'm actually fairly unhappy to be eating right now. Put my body in the line for science. A little too sweet for me. I'm not used to this type of sweetness in a product. That's probably the sucralose. loss. again, it doesn't really taste like birthday cake. I don't know what this is, but it's not that. Put a benchmark at 80. Blood sugar. So, see you in 20. All right, 20 minutes in to the Quest birthday cake bar. We started at 80 and we are at 85. All right, 80, 85, 20 minutes. We'll check back in another 20 and see where we're at. Quest bar update, 40 minutes in. And so started at 80, went to 85. Now we are at 97. Okay, so took a little bit longer than some other bars, but we're up there and we're rising in our blood sugar. So. We will review again at the hour mark. One hour in, the Quest Bar went from 80 at baseline, 85, 20 minutes in, 97, 40 minutes in, 107 at an hour. All right, so an hour later, Quest was at 107. An hour and 20 minutes later, 95. So here's the trend. 80 is the baseline, 85, 97, 107, 95. So on the way down, I will report back when we get to the baseline, but uh, obviously Quest here, not as much as some other bars, but certainly raises your blood sugar and goes back down uh, fairly quick. Two hour mark and we are at 84. So two by two hours, Quest went from 80 all the way up to 107 and then tapered off at 84 at two hours. So I'll consider that you know somewhat back at baseline. So hope that was informative about the Quest Bar. Um, as a recap, you know my opinion on Quest Bar flavors. Uh, if you like them, totally cool. Just know that you know they're responsible for blood sugar for me. Test it for yourself, and that's Quest. All right, this one is a labor of love. My baby, the perfect keto bar. Clearly, I'm going to be biased about this one. I spent about 18 months developing this bar to make sure that it crushed all these categories. So obviously the bar, perfect keto, keto bar. The flavor is almond butter brownie. Let's take a look at the ingredients. Ingredient number one, organic almond butter, soluble tapioca fiber, cacao butter, collagen protein, organic cocoa, almonds, sunflower lecithin, organic coconut oil, sea salt, natural flavors, and stevia. The nutrition facts, total fat, 19 grams, total carb, 12, total fiber, nine. So three grams net carbs there. Size, 45 grams, pretty standard. And then 10 grams of grass-fed collagen protein. So let's dig in. Look at this beauty. Again, I told you it was gonna be a little biased, but I love it. Mm. <laughs> taste is obviously amazing. I'm a freak about taste. Um, I spent a while doing this one. Tastes just like an almond butter brownie. That's why I call it that. Consistency, like heaven. Like how heaven would taste if you were to eat it, if you were to chew it. Also, blood sugar. Let's take that peak. 80. As we start this, I'm just gonna enjoy this bar. I'm smiling. Mm -mm -mm. It's like you're actually chewing on something. It's not like you just scarf it down and then it goes away. I mean, what the hell was that? Like, this is gonna fill me up. Okay. One more bite. And we'll check back in in 20 minutes. See what happened to the blood sugar. 20 minutes later, here we are. Went from 80 to 84. No spikes, nothing crazy. So we'll wait. We'll check in in another 20. All right. At 40 minutes from the perfect keto, keto bar. And 83, zero spikes. That clean line at the bottom. We went from 80 to 84 to 83 which can happen just by standing up or sitting down. There we are. Wait one more final 20 minutes for this one, and then we'll see where it's at. And if there's no spike, then we will conclude the test. See you in 20. Final 60 minute mark, keto bar from Perfect Keto. This is why we did it. 81. See how flat the blood glucose curve is? Again, it took 18, 18 different iterations to nail this. We track this stuff every single time obviously i think it's i think it's the best one um you give it a shot see for yourself all right next up dang bar dang sorry upside down so bar is 
almond vanilla flavor. The size, 40 grams, 200 calories. Total fat grams, 14. Total carbohydrates, 11. Fiber, 6 grams. Sugar, 3. Snack carb, 5. Protein at 9 grams. Okay, where is all that stuff coming from? Ingredients. Almond, chicory root fiber, um, which I know that has been a problem in the past for other bars and me testing my blood sugar, so we'll see how this one goes. Excited to test it. Pea protein, cocoa butter, sunflower seeds, pea protein crisps, which have pea protein and rice flour in it. Coconut, natural flavors, chia seeds, sea salt, stevia extract, um, and vitamin E. So overall, pretty clean label. Uh, I'm not a giant fan of isolated pea proteins and pea protein crisps, but otherwise, pretty clean. So good work, Nick. Open it up. Consistency. Boom. Nailed it. Not many other keto bars can claim this. Good work. Um, consistency is like a bar, um, pretty rigid, so it doesn't snap easily. It's not all melty, it's not all weird. So let's dig in. Mm. The consistency in the chewiness is good. It's a little dry, but overall good. Um, taste is almost like sour. It has hints of vanilla, but I don't know what it is that makes it taste a little sour or tart. Let's look at blood glucose at 84. So it's a baseline. Chewability is good, a little dry. Good move of the inclusions here, so you can see in there chunks of almond, chunks of sunflower seed. This does not taste like almond vanilla to me. A little bit of vanilla, but it's like a Swedish sour tart. Also seems really small, like how thin it is. Doesn't seem like you're eating as much, but crap. Okay, one more bite. Uh, we'll touch in 20 minutes. Go from baseline 84 to 99. Okay, so already a considerable jump in the first 20 minutes. We'll see if it keeps rising and we'll track it again in another 20. We are at now 40 minutes and started at 84, went to 99, now at, as you can see, 111. So, dang, that's a big increase in blood sugar. We are now at the one hour mark. We went from 84 to 99 to 111. And we're at now, so trending downwards a little bit, but still a pretty significant rise of almost 30 points. Um, I would not necessarily call that keto. Um, good consistency in the bar. Weird flavor, not keto in my opinion. Um, that is my personal experience. We will test again and I will get you guys some updates as far as when this levels off and returns to baseline. But so far, um, dang, for sure raises blood sugar. Quick update, we are at 100, 100 minutes and 101. 101, still tapering down. I will update you guys next on whenever I return to baseline, whenever that is. 101 from baseline of 84, 99, 111, 105, 101, and we'll catch you at baseline. All right, all right, all right. We are at two hours, and so we went from 84, 99, 111, 105, 101 with the dang bar, and still trending downwards so at 95. Check out the graph below, boom, big spike. I'm gonna cut this video short with the dang bar, but we're at two hours, it's trending downwards. I would probably estimate like another hour or so, it's a back to baseline. Anywhere between like one and three hours, I'd say it's somewhat normal for foods like this, but certainly not normal for a keto food. All right guys, so that is a recap of the bars. We have the keto bar coming in first place. Um, again, I spent a lot of time developing this thing, so no surprise there very little blood sugar response from that so i mean this is what we've seen from testing this stuff internally at the at the perfect keto hq but i mean pretty much non-significant if nothing um, from blood sugar response from that um quest goes from 80 to all the way up to 107 back to baseline in roughly two hours dang bar which is a keto marketed bar went from 84 to 105 and then back to baseline roughly around three hours um, bulletproof went from 80 to 116 and back to baseline for five hours. So that one actually surprised me the most. Um, leave some comments below if you guys want to see any other comparisons. Uh, I'd love to do this. Um, I might do one with keto cookies or any kind of low carb protein cookies, same thing. Um, just as a reminder why I'm doing this. I think that the lower you can keep your, keep your blood sugar for the longer period of time is better. So if you eat a food with carbohydrates, obviously you're gonna have a spike in insulin and a spike in blood sugar, totally normal. That should return back to baseline though within one to two hours. Um, so the, lo the longer you can keep it lower and the, the more you can reduce that curve and reduce the spike, the better uh, met metabolically. Um, you don't want sugar floating around in your bloodstream. It can create a lot of metabolic damage, can create a lot of inflammation. So this is one of the things that I wanted to do is get this blood glucose meter implanted in my fat little belly and track these things over time and really understand how different foods affect me. Different foods are gonna affect you a little differently as well. So I urge you to test this. You don't need to get a fancy meter stuck in your belly. 
you can just get one that you prick your finger and check you know, every 15, 20, 30, 45 minutes, whatever you need, um, and to see after you eat a food, where does that food um, take you as far as this glucose curve? Does it go all the way back down? Does in, in two hours, is it an hour? Do you have no effect? These are important things to know, so you know how each food individually affects you. Thanks for tuning in. As always, check out my Instagram, dranthonygustin. I answer every comment and every question that I get through that, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.